and I'm going to hand the stage over to Terry and Caitlin. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Let me uh, start. We'll start with uh, getting our presentation up there. All right. Everybody able to see? Thumbs up. Excellent. Yeah. Um, well, I'm Terry Shamblin. I'm a professor in the ESOL Transitional Studies Department at Monroe Community College. I teach English, um, reading, writing, learning, thinking, also college success courses. Um, anything to do with language, I love it. So, Caitlin? I am Caitlin Pilk. I am an instructor of nursing at Monroe Community College as well. Um, I teach in our second semester course, which is a medical surgical nursing course and also adult and pediatrics. Um, mostly focused on surgical patients. And I also uh, have a pediatric background in nursing as well. Um, so welcome everybody. Thank you for coming today. All right. So um, we just wanted to give you the description um, and we'll change the description on the fly. Um, so rather than random groups of colleagues, it will be all of us. Um, we'll explore some collaborative learning resources and techniques together and um, we'll break free of our escape rooms together. Um, and then there, this uh, presentation is also a repository. So there are well over a hundred team-based learning ideas. Um, and then also we can, there are some instructions on how to create your own collaborative learning escape room experiences. Um, and we'll answer any questions that you might have about that. So we're gonna do two kinds of experiences today. Um, so there will be a Google Slides escape room and a Google Forms escape room, and you can make either or or both. Um, this is my very first um, escape room. This is over here is a screenshot from my good friend, Renee Domino. Some of you might know her. She works for SUNY. Um, she teaches college success at MCC. And I got the idea from her and her daughters actually helped me with some of the graphics. So I wanna give a little credit there. Um, so this is the kind I um, was most experienced with. And then Caitlin, you wanna talk about Google Forms at all? Yeah, so the Google Form uh, escape room is where there is a series of questions that students must answer. So maybe you present on a specific topic or idea and students have to answer questions in creates a code that at the end of the Google form, it unlocks um, that form and moves on to another form that has another series of questions or topics that you discussed. And after those questions are answered, they create another code to then ultimately, depending on how many forms and uh, you want to create, they will eventually, hopefully, uh, escape the, the form or the breakout room. Excellent. And I, uh, I followed directions from a, uh, you know, I Googled to find out how to do this. And um, it was turn any worksheet into an escape room. And um, it really is possible to do that. So here's our agenda. And um, we're already changing it on the fly. So um, Caitlin, you want to do an icebreaker? Yeah, absolutely. So if um, everybody would like to enter into the chat, anything that you are excited about or looking forward to for our summer coming up. Um, I'm not sure if everybody here, but we at MCC go off contract. So we have always a lot of plans uh, during the summer uh, that is not school related or work related. So anything in the chat that you guys are excited about uh, or looking forward to for this upcoming summer session. So I know for me, I'm actually taking a little road trip and going down to Virginia Beach and staying a couple of days there and driving up to Washington, DC. So I'm very excited. I've never been to Washington, DC before and I'm kind of a big history person as well. So I am looking very much forward to doing a little bit of traveling now um, since being a nurse in COVID has been so crazy this past uh, this past year. So, yeah. 
And it looks oh. like a lot of people are traveling in the chat, going places, doing things with friends, going places with people. So um, well, those of you who are hiking, my hiking partner moved to Florida and left me. Um, so if anyone looking, you know, for a hiking partner, <laughs> backpacking, any of that. Ah, UV, my alma mater, whoever's going there in August. I was there. Um, thank you all for that. All right, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about collaborative learning at MCC, and you'll see the uh, escape room. And then um, we'll play a Kahoot game, some questions for review, some questions to activate schema for other things that we'll see. Instead of breakout rooms, we'll do one large breakout room session. Um, but I still would like to assign jobs. It's always a good practice when you're um, having your students collaborate is to uh, make people responsible and give them jobs. So a screen sharer, and um, I guess I'll be the screen sharer this time. Um, but I would like, you know, a timekeeper, somebody that would probably be Jamie, keep us moving along. Um, someone to drive discussion or ask questions. And then someone who would speak or take notes, um, take notes and then speak during the debrief session. And then we'll have the debrief and any questions that you might have. So any questions on uh, the experience? Or the agenda, I'm sorry. All right. Um, then let me, we will put directions in the chat. Um, we'll put these in later since we're not gonna do a large breakout room. Um, so we'll, we'll wait on that. Um, and then, so let me stop share. And um, actually I should have just done a new share. For some reason, I'm slightly nervous about this. So, um, all right. Where is our escape room experience? Right here. Okay, so it, as you can see, it's a Google slide. And um, so if you have students doing this in separate rooms, the person um, sharing their screen would need to go to present mode so that everybody could see. Um, and then this is simply a text box that I put here. And then there are clickables. Um, so we're calling them clickables. And um, so the first thing we're going to click on all these plants are clickable. The clock is our ticket out of here is how we escape from this room. And our mission is to help this poor professor here, Professor X, step out from behind that lectern um, and engage his students with collaboration. So we'll start here on this. And that takes us to another room. And then these items in this room, there are five clickable items. And um, it's all about MCC. So this is specific to Monroe Community College. Collaborative learning is our newest high impact practice. So Caitlin and I and a group of about 10 other MCC faculty formed a collaborative learning committee. and. Um, started this high impact practice. So these fabulous people here are um, our collaborative learning committee um, representatives from all across the campus. And then, um, so when students go into one of these clickables, they can come back out by just X Xing out here in the end, or the X at the top. And then, um, so we listed 20 collaborative learning techniques on our application and administrative guidelines for having faculty use a CL designation on their courses. So um, these are some of the things we know that there are others. So if um, anybody has any questions about any of these or has other things that are not listed here. I've already seen a bunch of these in the sessions that um, I attended this week. And then the desk is clickable. 
And this is our mission that we developed um, for collaborative learning. It is a high impact practice and it goes across all disciplines. And, um, but the purpose of it is to learn the language skills and processes of the discipline together with peers. And, and we all know that that makes for better engagement um, and then the part that we really liked um, on the bottom were the two key goals to work as a group of interdependent individuals, but also to sharpen their understanding by listening to and reflecting on the insights of others, especially those with different backgrounds and life experiences. I tell my students, we're together, you know, you might never run into each other in life, but for the next 15 weeks, let's get to know each other. Let's work together. Let's uh, be like that. All right, um, the students are the application. So um, we actually have a fillable Google form now, but this was our first draft of our application and our guidelines. So to be designated for collaborative learning, 30% of the coursework and or 10% um, of the final grade account for um, you know, is collaboratively based. And then the plant is also a clickable. And this just has the benefits. And you can have multiple slides here, but they need to go by themselves. So you can't do a collaborative learning escape room and have it automatically go because it just goes to the next slide. So the students have to actually click on it. And then these are the goals, um, you know, to learn the language of effective communication and of the subject matter. All right, then there's always we go back to the main room and we end up back here um, to our other clickables. And then um, we'll click on the top shelf to play a game together. This, um, so we're going to play Kahoot. And um, it's just a short one. We saw it, I saw it mentioned yesterday, but not actually played. Um, so I'm going to stop my share and Caitlin is going to take over. There is just one question in the chat right now that, about what, uh, how did we design these slides or what did we use? And we will share a link at the end of the presentation that has a template that people can go in and edit and create these Google Slides themselves to create this breakout room experience. So we will share that at the end. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to play Kahoot. So if everybody wants to go to Kahoot.it or if you have a mobile device near you with the app Kahoot on it, um, you can go to that and I will share my screen here to give you guys the game pen. So you will go to Kahoot.it or the Kahoot app and enter this game pin and it'll ask you for your nickname. It can be totally anonymous or you can also put in um, your real name <laughs> or a nickname, whatever you would like. So excellent. We are getting some people here. <clears throat> People are taking advantage, I see, of the um, anonymous feature, which is awesome. My students never, I've done um, quite a few cahoots for my students with practice questions. My students always want practice and N NCLEX style questions. And so I utilized our uh, faculty led tutoring sessions and I created a cahoot to do this virtually with my students to go through practice questions. And, they became very competitive and would start to brag to their other instructors even that I got first place on the Kahoot challenge and stuff like that. So it does become a very competitive and great way for students to collaborate um, and come together um, and also gain knowledge and practice. So awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and start the game. If at any point you get disconnected or aren't able to um, or miss the login, the game pin will be down at the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> and I gave people like one or two minutes, I think, to answer each question. So don't feel pressured. 
So according to Cornell University, which educational experiences lead to deeper student learning? Active social is the triangle. Contextual engaging is the blue square. The circle orange is student owned or the green square, all of the above. So number two, which of the following is not a collaborative whiteboard to use during virtual learning? Kaku, Scribbler, Kahoot, or Twidla? And these are just some of the examples that you will see throughout our virtual escape room experience here in a few minutes, folks. Okay. The anonymous otter is taken back. What is an example of collaborative learning techniques? Or what is an, an example? Lecture, journaling, independent assigned reading, or case studies? So that is correct, case studies, which are something that we um, in the nursing department use quite frequently. Uh, the new next gen NCLEX is moving to a case study based actually format. So we will be using a lot of collaborative learning and case studies uh, for students to practice these techniques to go take the NCLEX. The goal of collaborative learning is to solve problems as a group and enhance learning by reflecting on others' ideas. True or false. Excellent. So just because I know my students like the podium so much, I will I will let the graphics run through the podium and um, so we can all see who the winner is. It was Janie. Congratulations. Good job. <laughs> so thank you all for um, playing along with my Kahoot today. And I think I will give it back to Terry um, to discuss our the rest of our escape room. Thank you. That was fun. All right, so now um, we had planned on being in breakout rooms. Um, so just a reminder, take some notes. Um, would somebody make sure, you know, we should spend about one or two minutes discussing each resource. And then when we're ready, um, we can do the escape room uh, quiz. But, um, you know, someone make sure, drive discussion, ask some questions, jump in. All right, so we'll start um, here. We played Kahoot on the top. So on the bottom shelf are some books. And then this is all about games. So there are six clickable items for engaging collaborative games and activities. Anybody have a preference for where we start? Just like our students, right? I don't care wherever. I'll go with the shelf since I'm not seeing things pop up on the chat here. So we'll just explore these. Oh, how convenient. 
the question from Kahoot. So you can use Kahoot to activate some schema for stuff you haven't done as well. So these are concept mapping and whiteboard tools. And um, it's helpful to put a discussion prompt for your students to give them some more guidance. Otherwise, they'll be like, you know, what are we supposed to be doing again? Um, so we're just going to cruise through and um, look at them. So anyone ever use Bubble Us? Bubble.us, it's a free tool. And, um, you know, the basic plan is free, like everything else. You can create three bubble maps on that. Kaku, anybody use that? Am I even saying it right? All right. Um, a very useful tool. Megascope's whiteboard. <laughs> I'm just going to be like, anybody use that one? every single time we go through. Um, so lots of information here. And then each one of these has a link out to other, um, to more information about it. Scribbler, I've heard that mentioned. Um, <clears throat> you do not need to sign up in order to use this. And um, it's great for drawing and editing. There's chat and voice and those kinds of things. Twiddla, I've heard Twiddla a lot. Um, I've not used it. Has anybody used it? Hopefully people are, whoops, that's right. You could probably see the uh, the chat if I do that. Can't let them monitor it and I'll stop. Um, and then debate graph um, for argument visualization and collaborative editing. And this information came from EdTech. Anybody have anything to say about those? All right. That was the shelf. Can't remember. I'm going to go with the clock next. Somebody help me keep track. These are um, serious educational games. So we've got Kahoot and um, other ones, but these are um, serious ones and um, used in many of these online programs. So we'll just cruise through. Um, the ones with the blue have live links on them. So these are for business and management, ports of call, um, an EIS simulation. I don't even know what that is because I am not a business teacher. Um, and then innovate, a simulation game from IBM. So scenarios, smarter traffic, smarter customer service, smarter supply chain. So someone who teaches business. Um, games for students, Lure of the Labyrinth is a math game. Um, it says middle school students, but you know, if you're teaching developmental math or um, some review, that might be fine there. Um, Betwixt Folly and Fate, um, dealing with, what, what did they, uh, oh, just for students, first person experience, um, Electro City, um, about energy, the environment, and more. And then training games from the Army, uh, the Navy, uh, a triage game helps train those who respond to emergencies. So a triage there. Um, and then under health and medical, which I don't know why triage wouldn't be under health and medical, um, but that's okay. Nonviolent tactics to disarm potentially violent situations, conflict resolution, social work um, applications here, fat world, nutrition, socioeconomics, US culture, human sim for healthcare professionals, um, high risk procedures virtually rather than on people, um, food detectives, fold it, uh, proteins, science talk, <laughs> you can tell I'm not in my element here. <laughs> Sciencey things. Um, and then environmental games. Darfur, Darfur is dying. So there's a refugee camp. Um, third world farmer run a farm in Africa against the backdrop of poverty and conflict um, developed by students in Copenhagen. So lots of stuff here. Karma tycoon, stop disasters. I did click on this McDonald's video game um, and 
you can it takes you to farms and and just all the harm that the fast food industry does and i had my students read something i thought might be related to this um political games about democracy um redistrict redistricting gerrymandering um a nobel peace prize game and a filament game here um in a hands-on manner so you know when you get time check this out later um we'll check this plant looks interesting to me <clears throat> 53 virtual activity ideas to keep college students engaged during COVID-19 um, and I actually used some of these um, just cruise through here make a collaborative playlist have a dance party discuss movies um, post a YouTube video of the day, improv games, um, door decoration, like uh, Weird Holiday, there's the one, MTV Cribs, um, which celebrities showed off their homes, um, emphasize the creativity of their home stylings and fun, rather than the wealth, of course. Um, lots of word searches, crossword puzzles, charades, a game show like Kahoot or Quizzes, TikTok competitions, scavenger hunts, um, a board game tournament, a bad joke. This is the one I use. Somebody tell me your worst joke, your best pickup line. Um, I got really good answers on best pickup line. I, um, I ask a question every day on Zoom, a daily question, and it is along those lines. Tell me your worst joke, tell me your best pickup line. Um, or tell me something you're proud of yourself for. And that does, it goes a long way towards building community. Um, so lots of ideas here. I'm not gonna go through because there are 53 of them and I wanna make sure um, you know we have time for all of our resources to check them out. When we did this with faculty, one group never got out of this room, never made it out of this room and, um, or to the other plants or anything. I believe the desk is clickable. Bamboozle is another site where you can make educational games. Notice that there are two A's and not one. Um, so lots of stuff here, stuff that is already made for you or you can make your own. And um, there are 500,000 pre-made games at Bamboozle plus um, whatever you decide that you want to do. So gaming's great for all kinds of things. All right, I've been talking a lot. Anybody have anything they want to contribute or say or ask before we finish the rest of our clickables in this room? You had some comments about um, the debate graph. Um, that they hadn't heard about it, but they wanted to look into it more for an exercise that they are already doing in a synchronized classes. So, um, and then people were talking about uh, the Jamboard, like Jamboard or other whiteboards. And I think we talk about Jamboard in a little bit with, um, a, in a different area in the classroom. Right. Um, and the whiteboard, so, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, Okay, we'll click on the students and see. All right, so the students are just taking you to Kahoot and um, we just played Kahoot. So, um, but here's the faculty would go to Kahoot and the students go to Kahoot.it to make their games. And our last clickable is this bookshelf. And then Jeopardy Labs, I saw this um, highlighted yesterday. And um, what I didn't know about it is you can have as many teams as you want. So um, that's kind of nice at, at one time. You can create your own or you can find one um, out of these 2 million games that they have here. So um, students love Jeopardy. Boy, are they competitive, like Caitlin said. You, you better show the uh, thing. Also, what's nice about this is it keeps score for you. So you don't have to. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one of those, the points don't matter, we're just in it for fun, and no, the points matter, um, and, and we better make them matter for students. So we'll go back to the main room, and that was just um, one 
area here that was on games and we did MCC here on this. So let's check out this plant on the top. That's what I was looking for, this little diagram that I drew up because I didn't expect to. All right, so this is, um, we had a uh, professional development. Okay, okay, everybody doesn't need to know my sign in. Um, so again, give your students a prompt on these, if at all possible, so that they have something to talk about. Lots of links here. So um, more information and specifics about Zoom engagement tools, breakout rooms, annotation. That's the one tool I really haven't done much with. Um, so, you know, you can check that out here. And then um, we use Blackboard at our institution, but of course, every you know, SUNY switching over to something D2L or something, I don't know. Um, so, but if you're using Blackboard, this is um, great information here. And then lots of free collaborative tools, all the Google Suite. Um, in Microsoft Office 365 has the same thing. Um, you can make all of those forms or um, spreadsheets or what have you. Padlet, I uh, heard you talking about that when we first came in. Adobe Spark, Canva, there is a free account. And um, I've heard people use this to have students make posters and poster presentations that are pretty impressive. Um, social bookmarking, that's kind of nice. Um, Coggle, more on concept mapping. Um, Perusal, this is a social e-reader. And um, one of our colleagues um, went to a presentation about it and said it was very, very impressive. Um, and it's right up there um, with, what is it packed back as far as getting student engaged students engaged in the readings so um and then she gave um our virtual campus people gave a presentation and here's her presentation right there all right um and then jeremy case he gave a presentation on zoom so if you want to watch that you're welcome to the recording there as well all right um well, Terry, there's a question from Diane. What's the student feedback on um, on the experience uh, for non-traditional? I'm sorry. What's the feedback from non-traditional students on on this kind of exercise? Well, I've only done it once, and um, I did it with a wellness room, and they loved it. They just loved it. Um, I just put a wellness room on our LMS that had links to meditation, nutrition, um, stress reduction kind of things. And um, so they loved it, but I'm not so sure if they loved it because they were stressed out and the material helped them or if they liked the experience. Um, so next semester actually is gonna be my first time using this with students. We used it with faculty. Um, Caitlin, what would you say was the? I think the overall feedback was really good because there's so much information included in this experience. And maybe you do develop this and you use it over several weeks for students on maybe a topic like I'm thinking in nursing terms. So like something on like diabetes and then you each plant talks about a different topic in diabetes. Maybe it's patient teaching diabetic ketoacidosis and those kind of topics. So maybe you have an overall broad topic that then you can hone in and do different topics. And maybe you do one big di giant diabetes escape room experience. And I have used this in a Google Forms format where it's more specific, which we're gonna go into in a little bit. And um, students overall really do like the experience and it, it's a good, it's a different way to test their knowledge um, without giving them a, a, a pop quiz or a quiz or an exam, that kind of thing, so. Any other questions before we move on? All right, did I hit this plant? I think it did. <laughs> I don't think you did, Terry. Try, let's try that one. Okay, no, all right. Oh. Uh, so this is how you would make your own escape room experience. Um, and what I would do is download a copy of this copy. And we can talk about this um, more at the end when we're not actually exploring the resources. But um, the 
you want to take a screenshot of the room after you make your text box that says your directions or not like um, for the rooms where everything is clickable I just added a text box, you know. Um, and then the biggest problem I had was googling images and getting the background removed from the images um, so that they looked okay in the room and so. Um, I went to some young adults who did it for me, <laughs> whatever. Um, but that's why you guys should just download the copy of the copy if you want to make the the room itself, and then you are welcome to it. And I'll show you. Um, you just change the links that I have um, and make your own links. And then the Google Forms. There are so many directions out there. Um, to do the Google Forms and Caitlin emailed me a great PDF. Um, I used that and then I used the other one about, um, I think it was this teacher every day down on the bottom about how to um, turn any worksheet into a Google escape room. And there's lots you can do with it at the end. So, um, all right. Now we'll there's try another this. question in the chat. Um, so based on your experience, which ones would you recommend as more supplemental or and more Blackboard friendly tools or websites? Um, this is very Blackboard friendly. You can embed the, um, the slideshow and, and students can go in and explore the resources at their leisure. So that one's very Blackboard friendly. Um, and I would say the, the form is also um, friendly, very friendly as well um, to give to students maybe as a ticket to class or an exit of class as well. So there was also another question about accessibility, um, given the nature of the visual nature of the program of the games and other tools. Um, and I can't speak to Terry's room, but I can say that the Google form is pretty easy to manage and students are don't have usually much issue with accessibility um, because of Google's nature with not needing a, um, an account, you can log on anonymously just like you would um, Padlet, so. And I think, um... I don't know so much about the room itself, but we can control the accessibility of the things that we have it clicked onto and linked to. So videos um, and you know, make sure that our forms that we're using or our Google Slides are accessible. But the main room, that's an excellent question, which I'm not sure. All right. Did I do all these plants over here? I think so, Terry. Okay, let's go over here to, uh, we have two more plants and then we can go to the clock. All right, this is um, from Vanderbilt University and this is a great article uh, with information on um, specific collaborative techniques. The think pair share, and then they have these nice graphics. So if you wanted to actually use their graphics. I know um, down below, let's see. So here's peer instruction. And then the jigsaw. Jigsaws can be you know, complicated, but they're great. I don't know how many of you use them, but I found this graphic very helpful in explaining to students what we're doing. Um, and so even if we just use their graphic here, it's um, open access there as long as we have that CC by there um, to, to break it up. And then all kinds of stuff over here about active learning, teaching statements, and then um, formal cooperative groups, theoretical underpinnings of collaboration, um, and then preparation. I think preparation is important, like spending the time in advance to give people jobs, you know, have them give each other jobs, um, explain what's going to happen. 
those kinds of things with any kind of group work, helping groups get started, how to assess group work, and then other activities um, here. So this is a really great resource for working, getting students to work together. And then I think this big plant, okay. So this big plant can take us to another room. Um, and then um, we just have three clickables in here. So we've got the window. Six activities to encourage discussion. These are from Top Hat, full disclosure. Um, so got them off of their websites, but which one might you use in which class? Absurd questions. Um, I, I use that every day. I ask questions. Concentric circles. This would be an in-person activity. So now as people are moving back together, um, a smaller circle inside of a bigger cir circle, and then students move according to how much time you get. Conversation stations. Um, you can have them assess. So this would be good for case studies, assess, diagnose, act. And then concept mapping is great. And we talked about that. And then a gallery walk is wonderful to have students look at resources, walk around the room um, in a live class or post and, and do it on a discussion in that format. Um, this plant over here gets us to six activities to encourage discussion. That was the same plant I just did, yes. Um, so that's the student. What happened? Oh, my links are messed up. Unless I'm linking on the wrong one. Yep. So one was supposed to get them to think outside the box. I will fix those links <laughs> as soon as we get off of here um, so that we have them and we'll return to the main room. We have clicked on all the clickables. So now we're ready to escape our room and we'll click on the clock. All right, and then um, we're giving you the answers here, but um, <laughs> it's funky here that you know you have to enter the code in all caps. So at the beginning of this presentation, which game did we play together? A Jeopardy, B Kahoot, C Chicken, D Bamboozle. Feel free to use the chat. Somebody holler out. Looks like everybody is saying B in the chat. <laughs> all right, excellent. Which of the following collaborative features is not contained in Blackboard? Um, and I don't know if you use Blackboard or not. So um, discussion boards, wikis, blogs, and journals are all in Blackboard and annotations are in Zoom. Yep. A, everybody saying A. Woo! All right, how can we use a jigsaw to engage students? Let students put a puzzle together. Let students think independently, then pair them up and talk. Use an online whiteboard like Jamboard to record their thoughts or form base groups. Divide them into expert groups. After they discuss, have the base groups teach each other from their expert groups. Looks like a lot of people are saying D. These are smart folks. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then we put the clue in to go to the next room, B A D. it needs to be in all caps, and then next, and you can put messages in here that say, oh, I'm sorry, you're wrong, or, you know, those kinds of things. All right, we're going to fill in the blank. Funny story, we tried this with faculty, they said it was too hard, so we put the number of letters in. They said it was still too hard. So we put letters in so <laughs> to help. The Center for Online Education provided an article entitled 53 Activity Ideas to Keep College Students Engaged During Blank 19. What's it going to be, folks? COVID-19, David is saying. COVID-19. So smart. 
Yeah. All right, COVID it is. Two goals of collaborative learning are to help students develop effective interpersonal and intercultural blank skills. I'm waiting patiently. <laughs> Looks like Britain and Chris are saying communication. And they would be correct. All right. Oh, we didn't, somehow we must have missed the three principles of online teaching. It's a great article. It's there. I must have not clicked on it. Um, what kind of study analysis will help? Will, does Caitlin do all the time? Yeah, yes, Benjamin, Ali, case study. Case study, excellent. Then we enter our lock code here. And we do next. All right, I'm not going to read all of these because um, there's lots of choices in these. Um, according to research conducted at Cornell, which one of the following types of educational experiences is not listed as leading to deeper learning? Lecture-based, active social contextual engaging student. Everybody is saying A. Are they? All right. Which of the following collaborative learning tools is not available to use on Zoom? Polling, journals, chat, reactions, whiteboard, annotation, breakouts. B, journals. Excellent. All right. And then lastly, there's lots here because I took all 20 and added one. Which one of the following is not usually approached collaboratively? I'm just going to go Looks that like way. Allie says, uh, oh, and now more people are coming in with lecture, see. All right, excellent. And then all the other ones are listed there. Um, and then our code is ABC. Whoops. And we hit next. Congratulations, we've escaped. So we could hit submit if um, you wanted to submit this to your professor or you wanted your students to submit something to you. Um, and we go from there. And does anybody have any comments? Any questions? You wanna go back to the PowerPoint, Terry, so then they, um, we can maybe copy and paste the a lot of people in the chat throughout the discussion today were saying that they would like the links to everything that we have here. So if we could link that presentation and um, give them those. Sure can. So here's this. Um, there's the one for sharing um, for just doing it. And then here's the copy of the copy. In the chat. All right, so there's the copy of the copy to to use that. And um, I wonder if I can click to that from from the chat. Yeah. Okay. So we can kind of just take a look at what the what the copy is here. So everything is here. And then there are some extra rooms down here. So you can go ahead and uh, you know use any of these. You can um, remove the clickables from this, put your text box in here with whatever you want it to say, and then put your clickables back in or you can go um, to the specific clickables. So like, whoops, these here, you can move them anywhere that you want. Um, and then here's the link. And then you can break the link, remove the link here, and then add your own link to it right there um, at the top by clicking on it. And um, so you can click on anything and then add your own link. If there's no link there, you'll get this little insert link. 
And um, you can link to anything, videos, any kind of stuff like that. So, um, and then there's some extra rooms down here that I didn't um, actually use. So, you know, you've got those as well. And so what I would do is um, get rid of anything that you don't want to be clickable, make your text box, do a screenshot of it, and then copy the clickables from the other slides put them in here any way you want, and then add your, um, your links and stuff. Right. You can stop share. Any other questions? Comments, anything we can do for you? It's on view only mode. It should not be, it should be the, the sharing one on view only. They'll have to save, they'll have to click file and make a copy of, right. to their own Google Drive. Thank you. So make a that copy. way they're not editing your document, right? Yeah. They're going to create their own. Yeah. So make a copy of the copy and then it becomes your copy. Yes. Um, so that you have that. And you can make a copy of the presentation too, um, I believe. Yeah. You are welcome to have it. You have my permission. You don't even need to credit me. Um, this is a collaborative effort here. And uh, otherwise I would have to, you know, credit my girlfriend's daughters for all of their hard work too um, on removing backgrounds. Any questions, I think? All right, well, thank you all for your time and attention today. And um, I hope you it was useful to you. That was great, thank you. Uh, in, in, any more questions for Terry or Caitlin? We're getting lots of positive feedback there in the, the chat. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording, but thank you very much, Terry and Caitlin, for your time today. Appreciate you being flexible and